All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our RBT practice question series. We're going through another set of questions together and breaking them down. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Please subscribe for all of the updates. Check out btexamreview.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. Jessica, a behavior technician, has been using hand-over-hand -hand assistance to help her client, Sam, complete a puzzle. However, she notices that Sam now waits for her to initiate the hand-over-hand -hand assistance before attempting to place any puzzle pieces himself. What best describes Sam's behavior? All right, pretty straightforward question. Now, what we'll notice is that Jessica is using hand-over-hand -hand in what they call assistance. Now, when they say hand over hand assistance, of course, that just means prompting. Now, just because they're using a different word to describe the same phenomenon doesn't change what Jessica is doing. So let's just start there. Don't overthink these things, right? She's using hand over hand assistance. A prompt is just a cue or assistance for a desired behavior. So don't overthink it if the words aren't exactly what you think you've studied or what you think you know. Just use practical common sense. So with that said, how are we going to describe Sam's behavior? What is Sam doing? Because that's who, we, who we're really looking at. We know Sam is getting the hand over hand prompting and is now waiting for Jessica to initiate the prompt before attempting to place puzzle pieces himself. So what do we call it when we have a client who waits for the prompt before engaging in the response? How do we describe that? A, Sam is engaging in task avoidance. Possibly, but once he's prompted, he goes ahead and he does the puzzle pieces. So he's not really avoiding it. Other, in other words, he's, he's waiting to start. What is he waiting for? He's waiting for the prompt. And when we have a client who waits for the prompt or needs the prompt in order to start, we call that prompt dependency. So B, Sam is displaying prompt dependency is much more accurate to what Sam is displaying given this information. With C, Sam is failing to display maintenance. We're not really talking about maintenance here. Jessica is still teaching using prompts. So there's really no way to measure maintenance or track maintenance yet. C doesn't fit. And then D, Sam is engaging in tangible seeking behavior. Well, Sam isn't getting tangibles here. He's not trying to obtain tangibles. <laughs> If we were to argue a function, this is possibly attention seeking just because of the hand over hand prompting. But even then, that's not what the information is telling us. It's telling us Sam is waiting for the prompt in order to start his behavior. And when we have a client who waits for the prompt or needs the prompt to start behavior, we call that prompt dependency. A behavior technician is working with a client named Ben who frequently engages in the screaming to get attention. The text team decides to implement an extinction procedure where they no longer provide attention when Ben screams. After a few days, the data show that Ben's screaming has temporarily increased in intensity and frequency. What is likely occurring based on this information? All right, pretty long question, but that's okay. We're going to attack the question first before jumping to the answer choices. What do we know so far? We know we have a tech who's working with Ben who engages in behavior to get attention. Now the team puts that behavior on extinction. So they're no longer going to give Ben what he wants, what's his attention. And so after a few days, what happens? Well, Ben's screaming increases in intensity and frequency. Now just stop there. If you were to use an extinction procedure, what would you expect the behavior to happen, to, to do following extinction? You would expect the behavior to initially increase. And why? Well, when you stop reinforcing that behavior, that was previously reinforcing behavior. In other words, you put that behavior on extinction. That behavior is going to happen more because it's seeking out that reinforcement. And it's expected. We can plan for it. So what is likely occurring based on this information? A, the team accidentally reinforced the behavior. There's no indication the team made a mistake and accidentally reinforced the behavior. For all we know, based on the information, is they're using extinction, and extinction seems to be effective. Because B, the team is implementing extinction successfully, is backed up by what? Well, the idea 
that the screaming increased in, ten, in intensity and frequency. So C, Ben is going through an extinction burst, is also likely occurring. That is very much what is happening here. The team is implementing extinction successfully. And when you put a behavior on extinction, we expect it to increase temporarily. And we call that an extinction burst. So what is likely occurring based on this information? Well, one, the team is implementing extinction successfully. And two, Ben is going through an extinction burst. So our answer here is both B and C. During a session, Alex, a behavior technician, is working with a client who suddenly begins to exhibit aggressive behavior, including hitting and throwing objects. Alex has been trained in crisis intervention and knows he needs to act quickly for everyone's safety. What should Alex do? Put yourself in Alex's shoes. We know every plan should have some sort of crisis intervention plan ready. Even if it doesn't appear it's needed, it should still be something in place if things go wrong. In this case, Alex has a client who is being aggressive. They're throwing objects. They're hitting. This could be very dangerous for Alex. It could be dangerous for the, for the client and anybody or anything else around them. And so if Alex has already been trained in crisis intervention, what does Alex need to do? Hey, leave the client and try and find the client's parents. Well, he doesn't want to leave the client unless the plan calls for that, right? But just to leave the client isn't necessarily going to be the safest option, again, unless the plan calls for that. So we're really focused on what does that crisis plan say? B, restrain the client immediately. Restraint should never be the first option unless it's the last resort or if it's a very serious thing. Restraint is a very serious procedure that should only be done with extensive training under extensive supervision. So B is not definitely not the right answer unless, of course, the plan calls for it. So what Alex needs to do is C, implement the crisis intervention plan as written. That's what's going to be important about Alex's next move. Whatever that crisis intervention plan says is what Alex should do because that intervention plan was written by the BCBA supervisor. Therefore, Alex should follow within that plan since he has been trained before. And then D, put the behavior on extinction. Again, A, B, and D are all possible responses here. It just depends on what the plan says. Since Alex has been trained in crisis intervention, he needs to follow that crisis intervention plan. Whatever that plan says to do, that is what Alex should do. Today is the first day of school for Amelia. Amelia's mom tells her that if she gets a start every day in school, then she can choose a reward on Friday. Amelia says she wants ice cream and a movie. What has Amelia's mom established? All right, so let's think about this. We're looking at Amelia's mom's behavior, right? And so we have Amelia who's going to school. She, her mom tells her, if you get a start every day in school, you get a reward on Friday. I'll stop there and think about what are we establishing constantly with our clients? Think about that phrasing. If you do this, then you get this. First, you do this, then you get this. Those statements are what? Those are contingency statements. We're establishing a contingency. If you do this, I will give you this. If you do your homework, then you can go play. First, you eat your vegetables, then you get your dessert. Those are contingencies. That's exactly what's happening here. That's what Amelia's mom is doing. If we look at A, a contingency, that looks like her answer, right? Always read all of your answer choices. B, positive reinforcement, and C, negative reinforcement. Amelia's mom has an established reinforcement, right? We don't establish reinforcement. Reinforcement is what we're doing as a consequence and what is happening to the behavior. And right now, we don't know about the consequence. All we know is what Amelia's mom has established, which is the contingency. We just know if Amelia gets a start every day, she gets a reward on Friday. That's all we know so far. Why is it not a bribe? Well, a bribe is the opposite of a contingency. With a bribe, you give the reward first and then require the behavior. So that would be where Amelia gets ice cream in a movie and then is told she needs to get a start every day. So the bribe is the opposite of a contingency, and we don't use bribes. What Amelia's mom has established is a contingency. If then, first then.
If you wanted to promote maintenance of a skill for your client, which of the following reinforcement schedules would be the worst to use? All right, we're looking for the worst schedule. Be very careful, right? That's the key word, worst schedule. We want to promote maintenance. And to promote maintenance, that means once teaching stops, the skill continues. And in order to maintain a skill, a, the skill needs to be used to receiving less reinforcement. And so if we want to promote maintenance, what's the worst to use? A, fixed ratio one. Well, the fixed ratio one is a continuous schedule. Every response is reinforced. That's not a great way to promote maintenance because once we stop teaching and stop reinforcing, that behavior is no longer receiving reinforcement every time. So A is going to be our answer because B, C, and D, they're all types of reinforcement schedules. They're all relatively thicker re re uh, reinforcement schedules where reinforcement is given quite often. It's easy to obtain, but no schedule is as easy or offers as much reinforcement as a fixed ratio one, an FR1, or a continuous schedule. So for promoting maintenance, the worst schedule to use is a continuous schedule or a fixed ratio one schedule. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. We really, really appreciate it. Check out btexamreview.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, please let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. We'll see you soon.